Welcome to YourGov Nonpart, Political Science and Government for Everyone. And this time we'd like to talk about censure. Censure is a political condemnation. It is a public formal condemnation passed by either the House or the Senate in a federal constitutional republic condemning the actions of one of its members or of the member of the executive branch sometimes. It is not like breaking the law. It's, it, it doesn't have any force and effect in law. It does, however, have some force and effect in the person who's being censured's life um, in the respect that in the course of the history of the United States, for example, nine senators have received a censure and only one of them has ever really been reelected. So it has a severe impact on one's career, not only in politics, but in their career after politics. Now there have been a number of acts of censure through the years. Uh, one presidential censure, that was Andrew Jackson. One cabinet level censure, when an attorney general under Calvin Coolidge was censured. There have been nine censures in the Senate. 23 in the United States House of Representatives, but the United States House of Representatives uh, is a little bit different in the respect that they decided, well, we'd like something that's not quite as severe as a censure, but still ex expresses our displeasure. So they came up with a reprimand, and there have been 10 United States representatives who have, also, who have received a reprimand instead of an actual censure. Now, the difference is relatively subtle. A reprimand, you basically receive a letter saying, we're extremely displeased with you for these reasons, whereas in a censure, the person who has been convicted of a censure in either the House or the Senate has to go and stand in the well at the on the floor of the House that they were convicted in and be read publicly the act of censure, which I'm sure is humiliating at best, um, especially in the age of C-SPAN. <clears throat> um, but that's pretty much the end of it. Uh, it's um, not as severe, it's the sort of punishment you get for something that's bad, but, but, but relatively innocuous, um, relatively in the respect that, uh, say, maybe lying or withholding information or, you know, maybe a, an illicit affair might be something that would bring on the, the Congress issuing a motion for censure. It shouldn't be confused with a the more serious crime, and in fact, this is a crime which is called a contempt of Congress. Contempt of Congress is for a much more egregious um, act, and it's a crime, but it's, it's different than, than you usually think of a crime. Uh, in a typical crime for you or I, we're arrested by an officer of the court, the, which would be the police or the sheriff, and taken before a court, and then issue is tried and, and adjudicated. In a contempt of court, uh, contempt of Congress case, the individual is arrested by the sergeant-at-arms of either the House or the Senate, who's ever filing the charge, and the proceedings are carried out by that House, and the adjudication is given by that House, and in fact that the punishment is also determined by the House that has brought forth the charges, which could be something as relatively minor as a fine, or as serious as imprisonment, or both, or possibly expulsion from the Congress. Now, expulsion is usually a, a separate act, but certainly it's something that can be tied to a contempt of Congress charge. Now, uh, in other forms of government, such as um, parliamentary governments, they, they, they don't have censure. Censure is, is largely an American creation of the many dozens of constitutional federal republics in the world. Uh, the only other nations that use some form of censure that are Japan, which lower house uses censure, and the upper house uses a similar tool 
it's called something else. And uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the parliament in uh, the nation of Canada uses a, a form of censure. But in parliamentary governments, uh, they use, they're more commonly using something that's contempt of parliament, which is tantamount to contempt of Congress, and it is a, a serious offense, and generally, yes, that's, that's going to carry some, some fines some punishments and, and possibly expulsion. So censure, censure is, is again tantamount to a, a public slap on the wrist in terms of legal ramifications, but your political career is by and large over and it can have ramifications in your career after politics. Uh, for example, many politicians are licensed attorneys and if the charges seem egregious enough to the uh, American Bar Association, it, it's theoretically possible that they would disbar you. There's a number of senators and representatives over the years that uh, have been or, or currently are physicians it is again theoretically possible that the American Medical Association could uh, yank their license to practice medicine uh, once they left uh, Congress. So there are there are some, some potential serious long-term ramifications to a congressional censure, not the least of which nobody really wants to hire somebody who uh, the United States Senate has said you have done something that is so repugnant to us, even though it's not illegal, that we felt it necessary to vote as a group and tell the world that what you did was pretty bad. So this can have some very serious long-term effects. But it should not be confused with, with like say, there being fines and, and, and jail time and things. They're associated with an actual crime. I, I, I want that distinction to be clear. Um, that is something that would fall under the formal charge of contempt of Congress. So we hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Yorga Nonpart's issue on censure. Um, I want you to take some time and consider subscribing above. You can find us on Facebook. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And as always, thank you for watching.